Let's go to Beth in Tucson, Arizona. What's up, Beth? Hi, how's it going? We are rocking on. How are you? Good, you know, just trying to stay cool. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, you're in Arizona. Dude, it's a million degrees. You have to stay cool. <laughs> yes. You're trying to stay not yes. dead. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so hot. Ah, so hot. So what's up? Okay, so my question today is um, how can I best be a friend to my best friend who has been battling cancer for three years um, and continue to just get bad news after bad news? Uh, what's bad news? Um, yeah, I don't, I'm trying not to go too deep into um, telling her story for her, but um, basically it's at the point now where um, it's alternate treatments and uh, it's, okay. I so don't it's know. terminal. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, and that's the thing that's hard about being a friend too, is it's, you know, I'm getting the information from her as she's, as she's willing to share or, and I know she's not wanting to give up hope also. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but it's, it's, I know that it's, we're at a hard place for sure. Okay. Okay. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah. So how can I help? I'm yeah. so sorry. I mean, I, uh, no, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I think it's just, you know, I've, we've been going through this. Um, I've been, you know, with her for the last few years through COVID and through everything. It's been such a weird time to battle something like this. And I think I'm just finding myself not sure how to be there for her or how to, I just want to be her friend and I just want to hang out and I just want to go for a run with her. But obviously that's not where we are. And so I just find myself feeling a little helpless with how I can just be there for her as a friend in this moment and kind of balance that with kind of, you know, the grief that I'm dealing with. Yeah. Um, and I think too, over the last couple of months have started to realize that I'm grieving the friendship we had because, yep. you know, it's, we, we've trained for triathlons together. We've done all this stuff together. We've raised our kids together mm -hmm. and it's just, um, yeah, I'm just finding myself in a really heavy place and yeah. I'm not sure I'm trying to take care of myself and make sure, you know, I just went on a family vacation and trying to, I keep telling my husband, I'm trying to hold <laughs> But the joy and the grief at the same time, and mm -hmm. it's really difficult. Um, but I'm just at this point trying to figure out how I can best be there for her as she's navigating this. <sighs> One, she's lucky to have you, and oh, thanks, thanks for articulating that that way. You you laid it out perfectly. That that balance is so hard. How old are you? Um, we're both thirty five. Oh my gosh! Yeah. What's the yeah, cancer? It, uh, that's, um, well, it's um, colorectal cancer. I was going to say, it's either but, colon cancer, or, yeah, yeah, or breast cancer. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, my and it's, gosh. it's spread, and yeah. Man, so, what a mess. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay, uh, we'll loop through a couple of things here, all right? Okay. Um, I'll start with you, and then we'll work out. Is that cool? Yes. Um, First, this is going to be hard to hear. Joy is often on the other side of grief. And you can make yourself insane trying to force one and hold the other. Okay. And so this is a season of grief for a hundred different reasons. And it's not selfish for you to grieve the loss of your friendship. And it's not selfish to grieve the loss of the plans you guys had to do a triathlon when you're 40 and to be those two wrinkly old 50-year-old ladies running in the neighborhood. Like you had that picture in your head and grieving that is the right thing to do because it's not going to okay. happen. Because it's not going to happen. Yeah, right? that's, I think that's the hard part is that um, – you know, what she's dealing with is so much heavier than yeah, what so, I'm doing. And listen, so listen, listen. So hard. Okay, yeah, listen. <laughs> Do not ever, ever, ever compare grief. Okay. Your grief is yours. Okay? Okay. That's a fool's errand and everybody ends up worse off when we compare grief. Her looking at you going, oh, you think you've got it bad? I've got this. If she thinks that, that doesn't help her cancer. No, she's not that way. Of course she's not, right? But, <laughs> no. but I heard it a lot during COVID, like, oh, well, my husband lost his job, but at least not like Dennis, my friend's husband who's on a ventilator. And it's like, well, at least my husband right. didn't die. Everybody's life right. was hard, right? And so own where you are right now. <sighs> the one recurring challenge I hear from people who are 
get cancer is that they say the hardest part of getting cancer is often making sure everyone else in their life is okay. Yeah, and I'm very aware of that. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm trying not to be that person to her. Um, and I'm trying to, uh, the hardest part is just not, uh, obviously I want to know how she's doing and how, but trying to find some normalcy as in our friendship. Okay, listen, there's none. <laughs> I know. It's not. <laughs> I'm just trying to, I'm trying to, I, it's like, I just want to give her a break <laughs> yeah. from this heaviness. And I know I can't, but yeah. I, yeah, it's hard. So as a person who's a triathlete, as a person who's going on vacations and, and writing down in your planner that we will have joy, right? Which is probably who you are. Um, yes. There's nothing more terrifying and nothing more, um, um, there's no more feeling mortal than watching someone who's very similar to you die. Yes. And you can't control it. No. And the control part is what makes you nuts. Yeah. The letting go part and the being really, really sad and the grieving this, that's where there will light, be light on the other end of it, but you got to go through the black hole first. I wish there was another yeah. way. And I just think it's hard because, I mean, I was at the, we were at the park with our kids the other day and it's like, it's. It's surreal, right? She's still here. She's still here. Yeah. She's still my friend. You would never look at her and even know that she's sick. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's very hard. Yeah. It is. <sighs> All right. So I want you to loosen the control. And this is going to okay. sound bonkers. I want you to lean into this discomfort, not away from it. Okay. Lean into it and don't try to control it. Okay. What that looks like is keep a record, a journal of how you're feeling. If you haven't started something, keep it and it'll be a great gift for her kids one day. Okay. Okay. What you're going to miss about her what you'll miss about you after she's gone, that you're scared and alone and terrified. And there's days you just want to go hug her and make this all better and you can't. Write all that down because here's what you're going to do for her kids. You're going to give them some words and language to the hurt they feel after mommy's gone. Okay? Okay. I also want you to, this is going to sound bonkers, but have you sat down and asked her, what do you need? Um, no. <laughs> Ta-da! So, okay. Um, you, you, there's nothing worse than dating a guy, and men are the worst about this, but dating a guy, and he's like, I know what I'm getting her for Valentine's Day, a great makeout session. And yeah. you, you know what I mean? Like, and he's got all these ideas for how he's going to truly honor her. And I always like to my buddies, have you, have you asked your wife what she wants? Because what she really might want, the greatest, most romantic gift you could give her is like you to go away. That could be awesome. Yeah. Or to do the dishes, right? <laughs> so I tell you this, when somebody's hurting, we often rush to fix that person's hurt because we feel uncomfortable and we're actually trying to heal our own discomfort. Right. Okay. I want you to go ask your friend. I love you. We've done hard things together and we're entering into mile 28. Mm -hmm. And this is an uncharted run for both of us. What do you need right now? Yeah. If you need me to stay away, because every time you see me, you grieve what you're not going to have, I'll stay away. If you need me to show up and just bring tacos and ride this sucker down, I'm going to let my nutrition go and we're going to eat beer, drink beer and eat nachos <laughs> until this thing rides up. Yeah. Ask her what she needs. Yeah. And I think there's been seasons of that. I just think, um, yeah, it's just been in this, the last few months of extra yeah. heaviness. Yep. Um, yeah. Don't try to fight the extra heaviness because it's going to come anyway. And quite okay. honestly, it's going to take you with it. Um, can we do right. this? Um, Kelly um, is a cancer survivor and um, I would love to, is it cool if I get her insight on this? Yeah. Uh, oh, yes. Please. Would you, Kelly, would you be willing to say something? Of course. Okay. So... You may tell me, John, you're an idiot. That was terrible wisdom there you gave her. Um, walk it through. You get the cancer diagnosis, and then there's the scary season. Yours obviously wasn't, isn't, wasn't right. terminal. It wasn't but, quite the same thing. Um, walk us through your experience. Yeah. Hey, Beth. So one thing that John said about asking her, I, I actually raised my hands because it was such a huge moment. Yes. 
my boss here, my, um, one of the greatest gifts he gave me was he asked me, how do you want us to treat you? Mm, okay. And, I w- and my answer was like you did yesterday. Yeah. And before all this, because I didn't want to be babied and everyone to right. feel sorry for me. And so by him asking that, and I knew if I had said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a little emotional, so I need you to be nicer to me, they, they would have done it. He would have done it. But right. the fact that he um, let me be an adult and didn't assume how I wanted to be treated, he allowed me to make that decision. And then the yeah. biggest, biggest thing is when you're the person that, that has cancer or any issue, other people's feelings are exhausting. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So they, they really are. They are exhausting. <laughs> and that was harder for me to deal with than anything was everybody else's need to tell me how I was going to be fine. And I'm so sorry. And I'll pray for you. I know everybody right. meant well. But by the time I went home, I was like crawling in bed just because I was so tired. <laughs> so Yes, I can feel that. Yeah. yeah finding mm-hmm. another way for that outlet, your husband, another friend. Um, but yeah, with I her, have been very, very careful with that. And yeah. I think, I mean, one thing that's been... You know, when we're with our kids, it's easy to just be moms and to be present with each other and to laugh at our kids and to have those late moments. So I've tried, we've leaned into that. But yeah, I definitely, um, yeah, I think it's, um, you know, I've given the, hey, let me know how I can help or what I can do, but not as direct of. Hey, what? How can I be Beth, different? Beth, I mean, I'm you, asking you. you Beth, you just <laughs> said not, something. I asked her. You said something yeah. really important. That I want to hang on to. Yeah. When y'all are just being moms and y'all are just playing with your kids and y'all are just hanging out, that's one of the greatest gifts you can give her. Yes. But when you go home, that feeling you feel, that's your grief, not hers. Yes. Definitely. Right, and it's not her job to make that yeah, grief go away. You can't put her your grief on her. No, definitely not. Yeah. Right. I've been and very when careful about that. She's getting, she's never going to forget she has cancer. And if right. you don't talk about it or, you know, all of a sudden you just pretend like the old days, trust me, she's not going to forget. She's getting it from her, <laughs> probably her husband, her doctors, and a million other people that mean well and everybody at her church. She needs somebody to treat her like a friend. Yeah. Just to, definitely. and I mean, not everything's not going to be normal, but someone that's going to laugh and, you know, make fun of her if that's what you, I mean, my friends and I are complete and totally sarcastic. So, you know, when I had my mastectomy, there was jokes. (laughs) Lots of jokes. Lots of jokes (laughs) because that's what I needed. I didn't need somebody to pet me and go, oh, I'm so very sorry. I had plenty of that. I needed my friends to be my friends still because I needed a sense of normalcy. Okay. Yeah. So as much of that as you can do and hey, what can I do for you? They're never going to, no one's ever going to say, Well, actually, I really need someone to go to the store. Just step in and say, I'm going to the store. What do you want me to get? Yeah. Or I'm on my way over. What do you want from Starbucks? Yeah. Because people hate to ask, especially if they're like me. They don't want to ask for help. Exactly. So just stepping in and doing it, getting over there and just being her friend. Okay. Yeah. And there's going to be some weird moments. Thank you so much, Kelly. That was awesome. Um, My oldest, greatest friends on the planet is a paraplegic. He's in a wheelchair. And... Mm -hmm. I've been stopped. <laughs> We've been stopped in like in in like restaurant parking lots because um, we're hassling each other so much. Like somebody came and got into, into me and his little brother's face and was like, how dare you talk to him that way? And we were like, whoa, 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 whoa. He's our friend. He's our friend. And <laughs> you, it may be that she comes up to the park with her friend and you're like, nice haircut. And she's like, I know. And somebody's going to look at you mean, whatever. They don't get a vote. <laughs> this is your friendship. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or maybe she looks at you yeah. and goes, I need you to treat me like a princess. Great. Done. No, and I mean, I think I, it's it's really good to hear because, I mean, we've always, throughout her treatments and through, and there's another friend involved who doesn't live in town with us, but, um, you know, we send each other funny memes and all that stuff, and I've kind of stopped doing that because I'm like, I don't, I know, but I think maybe it's, okay, we need to keep the fun going and yes. maybe be willing to Especially. still and, and, and listen, and still, yeah. ask her. Yeah. Because there will, um, my friend, her name was Kelly. And when she died of cancer, uh, she had brain cancer very, very, very young. And when it first, when she, her first couple years of diagnosis, it, everybody knew it was terminal from day one. They should know how long. And um, when she first got it, she talked to everybody. She would go talk to the kids in the cancer ward. She would tell hilarious jokes. And we were relentless back. 
Um, she's one of the most extraordinary women I've ever met. But as it got further along and the timeline was getting shorter and shorter, it was very clear, it's not funny and we're not going to make jokes. And the, what we want now is more closeness and more handholding and more the hugs to be a little bit tighter. And it just shifted and everybody kept checking in with, what do you need? What do you need? What do you need? And so um, let her steer that ship. And even if you have to say from this point forward, I'm going to let you steer the ship. Like you tell me what you need. And I'm going to keep asking you once a week. I'm going to ask you, let me know how we can best love you. Um, and you find support and love and care for your grief. Maybe you and your other friend, uh, y'all go get together. Y'all go out. Y'all write each other letters, whatever that looks like. Um, serve her kids, whatever that looks like. But find outlets for that grief there too. And I'll reiterate what I said earlier. She's really lucky to have you as her friend. Man. Thank you for loving hurting people, Beth. You're awesome.